When it was released back in 2003, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was met with a lot of critical praise and even some Game of the Year awards at the end of the year. It was also loved by fans as well, many of whom have gone on to say that it is the best Star Wars game ever made. That is very high praise considering just how many good Star Wars games there have been over the years. But how does it hold up? Let's take a look and see, shall we? Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic starts in the middle of a civil war where the Sith have amassed a massive army somehow. No one knows how, but they have a large amount of ships. And they seem to be just getting one victory after another after another against a Republic that seems helpless to try and stop this. However, there is hope. There appeared a Jedi named Basil Sean who has a ability called Battle Meditation that lets her direct the flow of battle by influencing pilots, making them fight harder, making others decide to give up and things like that, allowing the Republic to get a few key victories. The Sith were led by two Dark Lords of the Sith, Lord Revan and Lord Malak. A strike team was set onto Lord Revan's ship, and he was defeated by Bastard Lashan and a number of other Jedis. However, Lord Malak took over the mantle of Dark Lord of the Sith and continued the seemingly unstoppable Sith conquest. That is, until Bastard started using her battle meditation. This is where you come in. You were added as a late addition to a mission on board a ship called the Endar Spire. You were added specifically at the request of Vastula Shan herself, and nobody knows why. Over the course of this game, you will find out why. You will meet a wide variety of interesting characters, and almost all of them have their own unique backstories to them, as well as their own journeys that they will take over the course of the game. You can even do loyalty mission type things. If you've played Mass Effect, you should be familiar with that and how it works. In fact, a lot of this game works similar to Mass Effect in that in between missions, you can go around your ship and talk to the different members of your party and learn about their backstories and whatnot. Every single time you do, you're bound to learn more about each individual character just as you did in Mass Effect. And it can all lead to you getting a side mission for each individual character. The notable exception to this is T3M4, but what do you want from him? He's just a utility droid. He speaks and beeps and boops, and you are never going to understand anything that he says because he uses the exact same communication style that R2-D2 does in the movies. When you first boot up the game, you are given the option to choose from three different character classes. A soldier, a scout, and a scoundrel. A soldier will focus more on combat-oriented things. A scoundrel will focus more on things like stealing skills, breaking and entering skills, that kind of thing. Scouts tend to be the smarter class, the more aware of the world around them. They are good at doing things like avoiding or disarming traps. Each class has its own unique play style and advantages to playing as them. You won't be nearly as good at avoiding traps if you choose to do a soldier as you will if you choose to do a scout. But you won't be nearly as good at combat if you choose to play a scout as you will if you choose to play as a soldier. There's no true right answer in what kind of character you choose to be, although it is pretty cool that you can select male or female from the get. You can be male or female for any of these classes if you so choose. This also has a few customization options to customize the look of your character, although it is nowhere near as in-depth as more modern games, so you won't get the character creator of something like Skyrim here. You just get a few basic options to make your character look a set number of ways. I don't want to give away too much involving spoilers here, but once you get a bit of ways into the game, you will reach the second planet of the game. And on this second planet of the game, you will be assigned a second class. Again, you get to choose which class you want to play as. It offers you a wide variety of classes to play as. 
To further customize your character, you get to set a number of skill points at the very beginning of the game, as well as a number of stat attributes. You can build your character how you want, and it's a fairly flexible system that lets you play through this game the way that you want to. And I really like that about it. I really love the choice that this game gives you. It's a lot of fun to play with, and it lends to replay value. As you might imagine, once you get to a certain point in this game, you're given a number of planets that you have to go to, and you can tackle them in any order that you choose. Mass Effect works much the same way. Combat in this game works similarly to the turn-based Dungeons & Dragons style of previous Bioware RPGs, where it's all based on imaginary dice roll. You will hit or miss based on these rolls, but your strength of attack and your chance to hit does increase as you go up in level. The highest possible level that you can reach in this game happens to be 20, so you can't just level up until you're an unstoppable badass. This is an interesting way of keeping things challenging, but I'm not entirely sure that I like it, because I do like having the option to become an unstoppable badass should I choose to spend the time and do it. Although you will level up pretty slowly over the course of this game, you won't be able to gain levels as quickly as you will in something like Final Fantasy, for example. I didn't even reach my 20th level until the final planet of the game. When you're in combat, you have a variety of attack types that you can choose from, and you learn new attack types and better versions of old attack types as you pick and choose what skills you want per level. You can also use a variety of powers in battle as well, all of which will help you defeat the wide variety of enemies that you fight. Each planet has its own unique look and feel, so you will never feel like you're going to the same place over and over and over and over again, because you really aren't. There's a lot of variety in the type of battlefields that you will play through in this game. Your party will consist of up to three characters at a time, one of which will be the character that you created. You can pause the action at any time to issue specific commands to the individual party members, if you so choose. There's a wide variety of grenades with a wide variety of effects that you have at your disposal, and you will find more throughout the game. You can also take direct control of any one of the three members in your party. You don't have to be directly controlling the main character. All of this adds a fair amount of strategy and depth to this game's combat and gameplay. You have to pick your party members based on what skills you might need, because different party members will have different skills, of course. The other major aspect of gameplay that you'll run into over the course of this game is dialogue. You will have a lot of different choices and responses that you can say to different characters in dialogue. And as you might imagine, dialogue plays out differently depending upon what kind of character you're playing and what options you choose and there are a wide variety of options this game does happen to have a morality system and this is usually how this comes into play you'll choose one option that is light side or another option that is dark side and you will gain light side or dark side points toward one or the other and your character's image actually reflects which side of the force you're moving towards. And it's actually pretty cool to watch that progress as you play throughout the game. This also lends a lot of replay value because you can go back and play a dark side character if you've played a light side character, or a light side character if you've played a dark side character, and experience different conversations and have people react to you in different ways as you play throughout it. Sometimes there will be quest lines that you don't want to follow, because you're doing a light side character, and every single time you do something in that quest line, you will gain dark side points. The same exact thing will happen if you're playing a dark side character and you do some quests that would net you some light side points. You may not want to go through with those because they will net you light side points, and they will go further up the light side ladder if you choose to. This game also happens to have multiple endings, so if you like the kind of replay value that multiple endings offers, that's definitely here. And it's worth playing through this more than once for a variety of reasons, this included. You cannot max out all of your skills in this game on a single playthrough. That's important to note. So be picky and choose wisely when you are, get more skill points and put them into different skills. 
You just have to pick a few that you really like and choose to go through the game with those set skills and level them up and get better at them as time goes on. It's entirely up to you and this really does lend to the replay value as well because it leaves you with a wide variety of ways that you can build your character over the course of the game where you already have at least nine different types of character classes from there being three at the outset and three more about ten hours into the game or so. There really is a lot to love about this game and the story itself is wonderful. It has a lot of twists and turns on each individual planet and one major, major plot twist that shocked us all back in 2003. I won't spoil it here, but this is worth it. This plot is excellent and I have played through it multiple times and I still absolutely love it and its characters. Graphically this game is obviously dated but not necessarily ugly and that comes down to the art style. The Star Wars art style is timeless at this point and you can't mistake this for anything but a Star Wars game. Everything about this game screams Star Wars and you can tell that the people that wrote this game and made this game love not only the movies but the extended universe as well because they pay a lot of attention to both the original trilogy and the extended universe. So that is really, really cool to see and visit a diff bunch of different planets that you may have read about in the past but haven't actually gotten the chance to visit in a game or anything like that or seen in the movies. You're not going to get the most detailed and high polygon count character models and whatnot here, but the art style really does shine through and make this game look better than the sum of its parts, at least in my opinion. I've always loved the look of this game. Now, I've spent a lot of time lathering this game with praise, and for good reason, but there are problems here as well. First and foremost, this game has performance issues. Even if you have a badass modern rig that can run this game on CPU power alone and not even struggle to do it like I do, you're going to have problems getting this game to run perfectly. And it's always been that way, so don't let that bother you too much. But there are times when the frame rate is likely to drop down to the single digits for a little bit. It'll be over soon, but it will drop down to the single digits and the game will virtually become unplayable for a minute or so at a time. And it's frustrating when it happens. This game is also liable to crash once or twice, as it did crash on me once during this Let's Play. Furthermore, there is one decision in this game that alone determines exactly which of the two endings you will get. And that's kind of disappointing considering you are spend the entire game going light side or dark side as you see fit. Having one decision make the ultimate choice for you almost feels like it defeats the purpose of this system. Although the light side, dark side mechanic is still a lot of fun to play with over the course of this game and will lead to different conversations, it's still frustrating that it all comes down to one single decision. Once you get towards the end of this game, it just gets frustrating as hell. The very last area of this game will have a couple of portions of it where it endlessly spawns enemies for you to fight. And if you don't kill them off quickly enough, you will get overwhelmed. This isn't fun. This is not something that should be in an RPG like this. That's something that even in first person shooters where you're better equipped to handle it, it's still frustrating to play as. In an RPG where you can't kill things in one hit, it's just maddening. You can't kill things rapid fire in this game. So having enemies endlessly spawn is just an artificial and cheap way of increasing the difficulty and after the game had done so well about that throughout the vast majority of this game say one or two parts where things are tipped out of your favor this is just all the more frustrating and it'll make you sit there and wonder what they were thinking when they thought that this was the way to design the final area of the game it isn't fun it is frustrating. 
also the combat can be not very engaging for a lot of people. It's interesting and fun to watch the lightsaber duels and whatnot play out over the course of the game, but it can really feel like you aren't doing all that much to aid your characters in battle, and that can feel not very engaging if I'm being honest. Although that's 100% up to personal taste. Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is not the perfect game that a lot of people will want to tell you that it is, but it is an extremely good game that should be experienced by everybody who happens to be a fan of RPGs. If you like good music, if you like good art style, if you like good exploration and character building, if you happen to like Star Wars or good storytelling or good characters, this game has all of that in spades and it gets a very, very hearty and high recommendation for me. Just watch out for that end game because it can be incredibly frustrating to play through. And there are a few other points where it can be incredibly frustrating to play through. But overall, this is a very, very good game that I honestly would list it as the best Star Wars game ever made, and I would love to see another entry in this series at some point in the future. Thank you everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. We will talk to you guys next time. Thanks everybody, and goodbye. <laughs>